Hunter x Hunter episode 117. I'm really curious to see where this goes from here. Gon's voice actor just crushed it. The clue will really leave, also. It's sad. Neither of them is more hurt or more concerned or, or cares less. They're just thinking about very different things. Oh, it's Malirion. I feel bad I once doubted this guy. It turned out to be all right. There's so much to this interaction. This dynamic is really complicated. One thing that comes to mind is that there's something in here for each of them that I think connects to what we've already seen from Poof. There's sort of a value question here. It's difficult to tease out in them and in real life because real love has a way of getting mixed in with all sorts of other things like expectations, creating self-definition in any given relationship where the other person being a certain way or giving you a certain thing is fundamental to your stability, your sense of self, your self-esteem. Gon obviously really loves Kite and there's part of that that's deep and pure and beautiful. There's another part of it where, where Kite represents so much much more than what Kite is. Kite is like a surrogate for Jing, who's this mythical, borderline godlike figure in Gon's mind, against which he measures himself. And he's such a high standard that him coming up against any challenge where he's not in control, where he's dominated, where things are taken away from him against his will, is such a fundamental and deep threat to everything he wants to believe about himself. It feels almost like it's just one step removed from feelings of abandonment that Gon's never really shown, but you imagine are there somewhere. Kalua also really loves Gon and is awestruck by who he is. There's also a big part of it where Kalua has defined himself in terms of Gon, Kalua's identity and emotional well-being are a function of Gon, which is really sweet, but also a little bit unfair and not stable. Maybe part of the reason why they're clashing so heavily here is because in this particular moment and situation, they're each suddenly threatening the other person's identity in that way, or inner motivations and desires. I can imagine Gon being really hurt by the fact that Kalua wouldn't just back him up, you know, take my side, don't you realize how important this is to me, which Kalua's always done up to this point. And then Kalua looking at Gon wondering if he even fits in his life, if there's any emotional space there for him. And this is definitely a reach, but there's also something Gunji-like about this. In that way, neither of them is really fully moving their own pieces. There's an element of freedom that they haven't yet attained, which is reasonable. Like, you forget, because of the protagonists, that they're just little kids. Insult X and X Payback. He will just not go away. Cheetah will just not go away. In another anime, Cheetah is the protagonist. He's got a grudge. It's weird, but it kind of sounds like he's in awe of moral. Maybe Chiru lives and, and like reforms, becomes good. I'm not ready for moral yet. Some desperate behavior to see moral. Feels like he's walking this one off. He could just fly home in his dragon. He needs to clear his head after everything he's seen. I feel like this is a retire retirement level incident. This feels like retirement level talk. <laughs> it's time to think about, yeah, deeply think about what's going on and where you're going. And yeah, I see you've met Chidu. <laughs> you know, arriving at where we've all been for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he won't make it out of here and <laughs> reform. Uh, okay. Maybe he's alive. He is not alive. Wow. Chido to go out like that. That's crazy. No mercy. Just when I was starting to like him. <laughs> Just when I was starting to think, you know, actually, it's some positive traits. I guess we'll never find out what his new technique was. Oh, you knew about this, huh? You were complicit in his mind control. Did Daddy's only just come to pick him up? And like in doing so not check on Kalua at all? Come to think of it, that potentially touching conversation between Silva and Kalua takes on a little bit of a different light, possibly, if you knew about the needle. Well, I guess it's ambiguous because it could be that he thinks it's inevitable that Kalua will betray his friends due to the needle and will just come crawling back on his hands and knees. Or he actually wants to see Kalua beat it and has faith in him to overcome and has the highest hopes for him to kind of grow into the role and be his own man. Because you don't want someone to follow in your footsteps or, or do anything for you blindly or because they have no other choice. You want them to do it because they fully understand what it 
is, being like really cool, expansive, dynamic people, and have come into it in their own right and chosen it given many other paths they could have taken. But it's unclear. He didn't really react one way or the other to the news of the needle being removed. <laughs> Such a cool power with such an annoying cost. Alright, oh, there's a battle going on. Mid-air, no less. Oh, yes, knuckle backstory. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs><笑><笑> <laughs> That's so cool. He's drawing a map. Oh, uh oh. Uh oh. That's not. That was not. Oh, he, that's not part of the plan. He didn't fall for the bait. Oh, this could be a setup. Oh no! Yupi ni totte no futari wa. So cute. He's a really good guard. He's not a threat anymore. They're just irrelevant. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's good for the plan though, no? Because interest is still accumulating very slowly. One idea I've heard that I, I like is that the opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. Hate in a very roundabout way can be a form of respect. It's usually an acknowledgement of someone's threat to you. It means they have some power over you or, or they have something at least. Indifference, not even knowing who you are, not caring, that kind of sucks. The first reaction I ever did got absolutely blasted with hate and insults, some really nasty stuff. I think it had like a 20 to 80 like to dislike ratio, which it probably deserved. It also happened to be by a very wide margin, the most viewed video I had ever had at the time. To be perfectly honest, it was a lot to take in. It's not easy to deal with a massive influx of hate from people you don't know. But at the same time, there was something really good about it and, and compelling and interesting, which is that, oh, people actually really care. You know, like something's happening. There was a realization that, oh, there's, there's actually something here. If I can take this and maybe do it more positively, more authentically, put more of my best foot forward, but sort of follow this path, maybe I actually can, can have something. And that was the, the beginning of all this. I mean, on that note, I actually think if you can capture an emotion, it's probably a, a good sign that whatever you're doing will be successful. I mean, some people fully lean into that on the negative side where the emotion they're they're actively trying to evoke is hate and they're okay with that trade-off you know like i'll be hated but i get success in, in these metrics whatever those may be side note to this i think actually a lot of viewers don't realize this is deliberate but like compare all that that situation to before that which is just like there was nothing going on <laughs> nothing <laughs> I love the energy, but I also feel like he doesn't need to. Though I will be happy if he just smashes Yupi. He's not getting it. Okay, good, good. There you go. Ah, bro, you did great. Oh, uh. Knuckle uh, you don't you don't have to. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, yes, right? No, I don't know. Yes, you live and you enjoy your life and you feel happy. The mission was a success and you played an important role. You should play an important role. This is sort of going like in a way, no? And there's a part of it I really do like, which is the outcome is sort of less important than your takeaway from what happens. For example, who you showed up as. I know from experience that you can fail something and, and come away feeling really clean and good about yourself because you like what you saw. You maybe impressed yourself. And conversely, you can succeed in something and come away feeling way worse because you either did something that you felt horrible about doing 
you have to live with, or you can't really conceptualize the incident in any way where you were really an important actor. Maybe it was just circumstance that led to, to the result, or someone swooped in and did it for you. There was no real push for your character. But I think a crucial thing in this consideration is don't die. <laughs> you know, being alive is sort of paramount. No, I mean maybe not. I think there are cases where it might not be paramount. You know, if you have a really high ideal and what you've come to is that your life is not the most important thing to strive for, then I think that would be really satisfying. But this situation, it doesn't really feel like that's the case so clearly. It feels a little bit more like Knuckles' ego has been bruised. I mean, yeah, defeating. Yuppie would be great. It would be really helpful to the overall mission and plan. But right now he's on a wild goose chase. Shoot's not doing well. Definitely seen better days. What's the clear objective to going back here? Though even saying all that, it's hard for me not to respect it. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to be. It's like a growing thing with Knuckle. It's not smart, but it's still satisfying. Then again, I mean, I guess the shoot's point. They came in here knowing the risks. They came in here prepared to sacrifice their own lives. You just don't want it to be wasteful. <laughs> Bottom line, Knuckle is someone I, I really would love having in my corner. When he's not callously letting my injured body fall to the ground. We're all a slave to something. That's what I'm thinking about in this episode. You do need to punch that guy in the face real hard. Two punches in the face it is. Right now it's your job to stay alive. Okay, Kalua. I <laughs> can't help himself. This is me, for real. I, I'm in the same place. Don't do it, but go for it. Punch him in the face twice. Real hard. <laughs> He's like, they both came to the extra punch conclusion. It's everything. Gon and Kuo will become Gon. I just want to hit Ahsoka in the face once. Actually, they're way better than Gon because they're going to punch him in the face twice. <laughs> Lovable fools. Our pride as <laughs> men. Uh, believe in Knuckle. This. The slowest seconds. We've all experienced time compression today. He's metamorphosizing. He's glorious. I think you're overthinking this. You severely underestimated this humanity and all that comes with that. Really curious. Oh, he's still conscious and doing this. At least he practices what he preaches. At no point is moral back down. Huh. It'd be really interesting if this comes back around to bite him. Someone's gonna let you be in the loop. Finally, at this rate, it'll only take about a, a thousand episodes for that interest to be significant. This poor guy's just doing his job. Yo. Yo. <laughs> oh no. You just gave him an outlet for his rage about managerial inefficiencies. I want to believe the instability will help. I don't think it'll help. Does that mean Pito also has a final form? Well, he's really good at evading. Well, so much for that! <laughs> this is counterproductive to your stated aims, but alright. You were right to doubt yourself and leave. Cool slide. Oh, nice! That was almost as good as the time he jumped out that building to save the girl from crashing into the crest up. Uh, <laughs> we'll get there. Okay, at least that priority's there. What am I... Oh. Oh, interesting. Oh, 
Is this, a, is this his... Is this him resigning? Except my resignation. I've been there. I've stress quit before. Oh, that post-rage regret. Is he vulnerable now? Oh yeah, now we're thinking financially. It's very, very boss battle. Oh, this narrator is, this narrator is so good at just dashing all of my hopes for everything Knuckles is doing. <laughs> I just love narrating your life this way. What Alex decided to do was almost good, except for his fatal personality flaw. Wow, what are you going to do with this? He's a good guard. He did not resign after all. It's more interesting than I thought. Also looks really cool there. I have to think more about this. But one thing that comes to mind is that if you really think about it, and this is super weird, your most negative emotions almost definitely contain an element of pleasure or else you would not continue to have them. Anger, for example, is extremely intoxicating. It's so easy to get lost in it. And the after effects like that are something like withdrawal. When the adrenaline subsides, you get this sense of guilt and loss. Sadness also has a, a little bit of a sweet tinge, right? There's the weird melodrama of it. There's also something a little bit intoxicating about the, the whole poor me thing. I think it's more clear if you look at emotions that are very persistent over long periods of time. It seems to mean that there's something you're getting from it, some reward there that offsets the difficulty or pain of it. Or else you, you almost wouldn't have it, right? Or it wouldn't persist that long. There's got to be something that's like keeping it going. And of course, emotion can be a really powerful force as like a deliberate wind at the back of your sails, as opposed to being completely beholden to whatever emotions naturally arise. Everyone's just sulking and wait. It is beginning to come together, that is true, in very bizarre and unexpected ways. I said this as an aside, but Kenny's line from Attack on Titan, we're all slaves to something, does seem to be relevant, though that's probably because it's relevant to everything. But yeah, I started this episode talking about Gon and Kalua, what they're sort of following and relating it to Gunji. It's true for basically all of them here, and at the heart of it is a lot of what they need for their own self-identity and image. It's funny that Yupi actually has some depth to him. I thought he was just the Hulk one, you know, the, the strong-bodied one who breaks through walls and like opens curtains. But then here he is in a matter of like a minute or three seconds of Hunter Hunter time, coming to a very emotionally masterful place where his emotions exist, but there's another layer, higher awareness of what's going on, and therefore a final say in the reaction to them. Which funnily enough is another way he's overpowering Knuckle. Is Knuckle not really able to do that? I got to see the whole thing. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I feel like there's a big statement being made about choice and personal agency, how much one is moving their own pieces.